Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to talk about fluid kinematics and the acceleration field. So in today's lesson, we're going to start with a, a particle perspective in one dimension. Then we're going to move on into that perspective in three dimensions, go over some important definitions such as about the material derivative, local acceleration, and convective acceleration, and then finally end with an example. So when we're talking about the material derivative, we have to think of it from a single particle perspective, where we have some particle that's moving along a path line through time, and it finds itself in a position A has coordinates X, Y, and Z. So that's kind of what we're going to be starting with, is dealing with this particle perspective, and we still are dealing with our velocity field here. So acceleration. By definition, acceleration of a particle is the time rate of change of its velocity. So here's the traditional way you've seen this in the past, right? So for a particle moving along a path, we can use the chain rule to find dv dt. So here we separate out dv dt into dv dx, dx dt, plus dv dt. Okay, so this is how we're using the chain rule. Okay, now if you haven't yet, I would highly suggest you uh, review your calculus three, your partial differentials. So we use the chain rule for the first term, and what we're going to do is we're just going to focus on x. So this is just going to be the 1d perspective. Okay, and we're traveling a distance along a path x, so dx dt is equal to v, okay? Since every point along s, along the streamline, has x, y, and z coordinates, we can also expand this, so this is just our x direction, but we can also expand this to every point of our particle in space as well as time. So this is what the acceleration field looks like for a reference particle A. So the first term here, we can see we're taking our derivative with respect to time. And here we're taking our derivative with respect to space. Okay, so as you expand this for a reference particle A, this beginning part here is just again uh, the partial differential with respect to time and each of these are considering the partial differentials with respect to the x, the y, and the z. This actually extends out a little bit further if we want to determine the acceleration field in the x, y, and z direction. So the first equation here is the generalized acceleration equation for any particle along a streamline, okay? But this is still in the vector form, okay? Now, in order for that vector form to be divided into its scalar components, we can actually rewrite it this way, where ax is equal to du dt plus u du dx plus v du dy plus w du dz. So I want you to notice something. I want you to pay careful attention to the numerator in our ax equation. In the numerator of our ax equation, each have a du, okay? So you're taking a partial differential of u with respect to first time, then x, and then y, and then z. Okay, now look at AY. What do you notice about AY? What are we taking the partial differential with respect to in the numerator? We're considering the partial differential of V with respect to time, X, Y, and Z. With AZ, we are taking our partial differential of W with respect to time, X, y and z okay when you look at this uh these equations as a whole 
this is often denoted as the material derivative. So the material derivative is uh, this capital D V over capital DT. Okay. When we break these into smaller pieces, okay, let me change my color here. The time derivative is typically called the local acceleration. So each of these are called the local acceleration. And the spatial derivatives, so that would be all of these, these are our convective accelerations, okay? So these are really important terms that your book often talks about, so I wanna make sure you're aware of it. I want you to have a nice, clean form of these equations. So somewhere I want you to write these equations down. We're gonna keep them very neat when we're doing problems, okay? Some important things to note about this acceleration equation. If you're solving for a steady state case, that means that your local acceleration, so anything with respect to time, is going to be zero, okay? So you have to read the language. If you see that word, or that phrase, steady state, then that means your time derivatives are going to all be zero. If you're solving for fluid particles along a straight streamline, then you're typically dealing with one direction and the other two directions are zero. So this would be if you're going from, again, A to B along the x-axis, that would mean that your V component is zero and your W component is zero. If you are not explicitly given that you're solving along a straight line, AX, AY, and AZ will be non-zero. So the key phrase to look out for is solving for the acceleration field. So if you're, if you have a, if you're solving for a field and you notice that you have U, a V, and a W component, that means you're doing AX, AY, and AZ calculations, okay? Now, if the acceleration uh, is, uh, value is greater than zero, sorry, if the directional acceleration is greater than zero, then we have acceleration. If our directional acceleration is less than zero, we have deceleration. So that's just telling you whether we're slowing down or we're speeding up. Let's do an example. An incompressible and viscid fluid flows steadily so this means our d dt is going to be zero past a sphere of radius r. According to a more advanced analysis of the flow, the fluid velocity along the streamline AB is given by this equation here. So as you can see, we only have a u component where u is v naught r squared over x to the fourth i hat. Okay, where in this case, V naught here is the upstream, looks like uniform velocity far ahead of the sphere. So what we wanna do is we wanna determine the acceleration field. So how do we begin this problem? Okay, we begin this problem very similarly with our uh, velocity field problems, where we start off writing our U, U and V and W components. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working on our material derivative. Okay, so, so start with governing equations, A across the streamline. If we're only working in the X direction, then A, Y, A, Z is equal to zero. In a steady state, no changes with time. So we end up with A, X is equal to D, U, D, T plus u du dx plus v du dy plus w du dz. Now we can start crossing things off because this is going to go away because w is zero. This is going to go away because v is zero. And this is going to go away because we have our steady conditions. So that leaves us with AX is equal to U DU 
dx, okay? So let's go ahead and write out our u that is going to be equal to v naught r squared over x to the fourth i hat. The partial differential of u with respect to x, actually, let me go ahead um, and write this out. That doesn't need an i hat. Let me separate this a bit. I want to make my constants go away because v naught is a constant and r squared is a constant. That's the radius of the sphere. So r squared, sorry, v naught, r squared, and this is going to be x to the negative fourth. Okay. Now our partial differential of u with respect to x, so we're going to carry over our constants, v naught, r squared. Now the derivative of x to the negative 4 is negative 4x to the minus 5. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put these together to calculate our acceleration field in the x direction. So ax is u, v naught r squared, uh, let's go ahead and put that back in denominator, x to the fourth power, multiplied by du dx, which is uh, negative 4 v naught r squared over x to the fifth power. So that means that our acceleration in the x direction is going to be about negative 4 v naught squared r to the fourth power divided by x to the ninth power, okay? And if you were asked to write this as an acceleration field, it would be something like this. Negative 4 v naught squared r to the fourth x to the ninth i hat, okay? So this would be the solution for our acceleration field.